is the photograph we're going to be working on. Uh, it is a wild rose bush with a very late winter snow on it, almost early spring. Uh, it's already budding and has some leaves on it. But what we're going to do is put a hyper-realistic icicle right in here. And we will have to paint it out, and I'll show you why. I have some reference photos ready to go to paint from, and then also some cutouts to use from other photos uh, just to show you how if they would work or not and if we will still have to paint it out. So let's move on to our photo references. Okay, let's take a look and see what photographs we could use to piece this icicle together. Now the references I'm going to use, the only difference is they have different plants in them, which these are red oak trees, which also then means different colors and even different lighting. These are from midwinter, and our picture that we're going to be working on is actually mid-spring. The lighting is different, it's a lot higher, and it's a direct sun. So we have to keep all these things in mind when we go to put this in. Now if you paint a hyper-realistic uh, photo, and use it as one complete reference, then that's okay, providing the photo is accurate. Now, what I mean by that is if we go to this one, then what we'll see is actually the bottoms of the icicles are actually diffracting the horizon line upside down and backwards. And what that means is it's acting as a converging lens. Now, there's an old photography trick that if you put something behind something such as this, backwards and upside down, then it'll actually show correctly in the icicle, but that would not be correct. Uh, what we are getting at is if we look at this real quick, and this is an actual uh, four by five lens, and what it's doing is it will show your photograph or your image backwards and upside down. So if you have a branch that is actually on the lower right, it will actually appear to be on the upper left through the lens. And that all happens when your image goes beyond the focal point of the lens. Now, with all that said, uh, let's take a look. We'll close this out. And right now, what we could do is just say, for example, if you wanted to try to actually uh, retouch this. And that would be a problem, too, only because if I take some of these out, I had these pre-cut out from this photo. And we will pull them out and just put them in our new photo and see what happens. We'll turn that one off. And you could see that all the tans and the grays that were in the uh, photo that we pulled them out of don't work very well in, in this particular photo because it's a different lighting and it's also different colors and different plants involved. So it would even be a question of whether you could even pull something out of one photo and put it in another. So we may have to freehand this since we eliminated all the other options. Now, a retouch such as this would be nothing more than just giving uh, the opportunity to do something that may be impractical uh, to actually set up as a photograph where a solid retouch would be uh, much more cost effective. Let's move on to the composition. The composition of this hyper-realistic icicle retouch is going to be pretty much straightforward since we're using the photograph as it was originally shot. I had the composition in mind when I photographed it and what I wanted to do was use an all-white background to surround this intense patch of green and that's where I focused on. So usually the sharp focused object in an image is where your attention is going to go to begin with. And it is in the rule of thirds, the upper rule of third. And then plus, once we put the icicle in, it's going to be refracting all the white colors around it. So it'll be a light shape up against the dark background. And then since we have to use the colors that are around it, we will also incorporate color unity within our icicle. With a composition in mind, let's go on to tools and techniques how we will do this. Okay, let's move on to tools and techniques. Uh, what we are going to use, the tools is going to be pretty much straightforward also. 
and that is I will only be using a uh, small script brush, only about a four, and uh, the maximum loading will be up at 100, and then I'll adjust the pressure for blending and painting uh, throughout the time I'm doing this. Uh, that'll just depend on how much I want to slowly feather in the colors. But what the big difference will be is in the technique, we'll have to keep a couple of things in mind. Uh, number one, we're going to actually be working at 200%. And the reason why is this will be a minimum. Uh, this is so I can actually try to piece these things together and make them uh, pretty clean at this pr uh, size of this percentage. And then that way, when I shrink it back down to print size or even 100%, uh, it'll be pretty clean. Uh, we want it to look photographic because we're actually painting on a photograph. And it has to match. Now, what I mean by match is if we go even to this edge right here, even though this is considered a fairly sharp picture in this particular area, you can see that the edge is pretty soft. So what I don't want to do is actually, um, I'll pull a color out of here and put a color down. If this edge on either side is really nice and straight and clean, it's not going to look like it's a part of the image. It's going to look like it's floating above it. Now, if I take my blend tool, because what I will be doing is I have the back rocker set at blend, and then I have the front rocker set as a, a color picker. Then that way I can actually uh, go back and forth from a color to just blend in those colors. And this right here, what I'm doing now is just trying to match the edge of my line with the edge of the leaf. So they both look together roughly the same. And that is the same amount of focus when it comes to the photograph. And once I get it at that level, you can see the difference between this size. You can see the difference. Now, we're already up to 400%. This side here matches this side a little bit better than this side here. Even though that's only a line of, of four uh, size, number of size four wide, uh, it is still showing a difference. And then this is where I will also possibly adjust the pressure and then go down and just barely feather it in. So I take it a little bit at a time to get to the kind of softness I want. So there's no edge at all. And then that will look like it's more blended in. These two sides, this one here and this one here, uh, match a lot better. And that's what I'll have to keep in mind as I make this entire retouch. That not only will I be blending colors together to match the leaf, but I will also be blending the edges to match the edges of the photograph. Now, with that said, what I will do is we're going to zoom in right here. We'll go up to 200%. And just as a quick example, all I am going to be doing through this whole retouch is pull colors out right next to something. And then I will actually just start painting over the white and I'm painting, I'm not actually cloning, which is a big difference because we could clone some of this out, but then we would still have to make the new icicle in. So what I will do is actually just paint the entire icicle. And some of those spots will be completely open since it's pretty much a, a very clear ice. Then we could see uh, what's through it because it's still showing uh, just a slight maybe color difference. And these lines here are just uh, refracted light from the pebbly finish clear ice. And we'll put those in too. But for this now, what I want to establish now is just a couple of different colors. And then go to my blend tool. And then just start blending. And that's how we would eliminate that white line just to get us started. And this is what I'll have to do through the entire retouch. And then that way, when I zoom out, then it'll start to look like uh, this line will slowly disappear. But now with uh, that in mind, we have to watch this. And then what we'll do is we'll pull the colors out 
And what I'll do, be doing constantly is going from a color picker to a blend brush. And I will be pretty much on this size most of the time. So let's go into the speed painting and get some done. Okay, here I am just roughing in the outline of the icicle itself where everything's going to be. I'm starting to destroy that white line first. And then I'll start putting in some of the opaque ice around the outside edges. And this I will make with the squiggly lines, as I said. And what that does for me is establish a texture early. I don't need to put down a solid color first since I already have the leaf to work off with as a base. Then this way the squiggly lines will allow some of the colors to come through and establish very subtle gradations of color, which is what makes up any part of a photograph. Working with the opaque ice, it will cast a subtle shadow, so that is what I'm working on there. And then just going back to some of the areas at the very tip of the leaf and the icicle where it starts, I'm working in with some of the actual edges, just trying to put in the highlights and I will go back to them uh, to actually retouch over that chromatic aberration highlights that I left there originally. I don't want to duplicate that, as I said, uh, only because that would be uh, reproducing an imperfection of the photograph. Now I'm just starting my bubbles and then also the refracted colors that are around the ice school from both sides just to get some textures and patterns started with the various colors I'm going to use. Okay, just a quick update. Uh, what we got done so far, the one major thing I wanted to show you was just the chromatic aberration. Uh, you could see what a chromatic aberration is, is when the light rays don't line up uh, perfectly. And then you get that real hot pinkish color, uh, like a real hot magenta pink on one side, and that uh, real cerulean turquoise blue on the opposite side. Uh, of an object or uh, in this case a highlight uh, now with that in mind I wouldn't want to actually reproduce that because then I'd just be uh, reproducing an imperfection of, of the uh, photograph itself so what I did was I put uh, pure white highlights down and I'll still have to soften these up just a little bit just to match these edges of what that photograph's gonna look like at 200. Right now it's at 300%. So that's that's enlarging it quite a bit. Uh, and then, so what I will actually do is go back in and then just technically kind of retouch these so all my highlights look the same. And then that way uh, I will be able to actually uh, not make these look out of place. And then at the same time, uh, if I would have done this uh, on my own, I would have actually ran it through a chromatic aberration filter first, take all those out, and then see what I was left with. Because uh, sometimes it doesn't take it all out. Sometimes you still have to retouch a little bit anyway. Let's get some more done. Okay, working back into the ice school itself, I'm just still refining some of the linear patterns that will be uh, seen through the ice itself. Grabbing any nearby colors that I think where they would be refracting and diffracting from. Now I'm still softening up the opaque ice around the outer edge, going back into the icicle. I'll leave some of those areas completely clear since it is very clear ice that we're working with. What I'll be duplicating is the ice that was on top of the leaf. To keep it nice and clear glass looking, it'll have a subtle texture to it, but it'll be pretty much completely transparent. Now I'm putting in the center line just to be able to put my water droplet in. I want to keep that water droplet nice and plumb since I put the icicle at a slight angle. I moved that final piece that was actually the branch itself below to the right. I moved it around a little bit just so I could actually put it up against the leaf so you could see it much better with a darker pattern up against a lighter background. It works well when you put light against dark and dark against light and some of these subtle shapes are so small that you're really playing with, with the background colors also, just to be able to see the very subtle textures and detail. Otherwise, with all the detail there, you won't be able to see it very good if, if, if it's not up against a contrasting background. Refining some of the bubbles, and they even put in some of the thorns that were here and there, just to put in similar colors 
that are around the icicle. I'll slowly refine the edges more and more, and then I will still have to soften up the actual edges to match the uh, focus content of the photograph itself. Then this will tie in the icicle more, so it doesn't look like it's floating up, up against the rest of the photograph. Starting to wind down now, I'm actually just putting in the final details, the very subtle bubbles. Uh, some of these you may not even see at print size, but I'm going to put them in just in case. They'll get, give some kind of final, uh, very f subtle texture uh, to the very end result, and it all does add up in the end. Just refining some of the sparkles and some of the reflections off the water droplet, then going back in and fanning out the actual crepuscular rays. I added a little bit of cerulean blue to some of the bubbles because it is a bright sunny day and I would expect some kind of uh, blue sky to be reflecting in this image. Refining some of the opaque ice just to make it look like a bright sunny day again and that should be it. Okay, I think we're all done. Now, it took us a little while to do that type of a painted-in retouch. Uh, here's what I could show you. This little stick has been bothering me the whole time. And if we would have been able to do this with some type of clone assistance, all I would have to do is go back to my photograph layer, grab my clone tool, and it's set. Yeah, that's set about right, right there. Have the opacity up to 100. These pixels right through here look good. So I would just touch down right in here, and then that would be it. That would be gone just that quick. And that actually cleaned it up quite a bit better uh, without that little stick because it makes the snow look that much more pristine. And then also, if we zoom in on our retouch, we'll look and see... And I don't see any issues with it. Again, the opaque ice will cast a very subtle shadow. And then you can see the uh, refracted light from the pebbly finish. And then all the little bubbles and the sparkle, the final sparkle on the water drop itself. What I can do is take these two layers and merge them together. And that is pretty much the entire retouch. So now here is with the retouch. This is what it looks like with the retouch. Here is without it. This is the original ice, the original photograph, the way it was. And since we put the icicle up against the darker background, and I tried to project my actual water droplet right here in front of the darker leaf here, then this is what it would look like with it. And the last thing I could show you is just to see how I actually did not paint everything in here, that what I will do is go down to the photograph layer, turn off the photograph, and then you will see the red come through the areas of the retouch that I actually didn't do. And then there is all the red within the retouch. It was just actually the colors of the actual photograph itself projecting through my retouch. And that looks like about it. So with that said, we will recenter up our image. And we'll call this one quits. So until we see you out in the field or at the studio, thanks for watching. <music>